Hello, and welcome back to Behind the Post. Here with me today is Aliza Hornstein, the lead social media manager at WalkMe, the world's first digital adoption platform. WalkMe enables organizations to maximize the impact of their digital transformation and accelerate the return on their software investment. For the past seven years, Aliza has been making an impact in the world of B2B enterprise social media across core channels. She started out freelancing, but quickly transitioned to full-time social media work and found herself working with some of the top players in the tech industry. While managing their extensive social communities, she discovered her calling in developing the personal voice and human touch for global brands. She now pours all her social prowess into the Walk Me brand and is loving every second. Lisa lives her professional life by the mantra, this is social media, so be social. And her personal life with Please don't lick that, as she is also the hardworking mom of four little kids. Lisa, are you ready to go behind the post with me? I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Amazing. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And I'm excited to also pick your brain selfishly as a social media manager myself. I think that this is going to be one of those episodes that we play on repeat. I think the experience you have is really going to be beneficial to our audience. So I'm, I'm so excited. They're going to love you. Um, but before we dive in, um, I know I briefly mentioned that walk me is a digital adoption platform, but could you just go a little bit further and give our listeners a brief overview of walk me? Sure. Okay. So the platform helps organizations see things from a very high level overview and then a deep drill down into their tech, uh, tech stack and how their users and their customers are using it. So um, basically by using the applications that they have and how to basically get a um, um, more accurate data and boost productivity by seeing how things are being used. Um, that's one use case. There's also the editor and all these different kinds of walk me tools that um, give organizations basically the, the option to um, make their, their employees and their customers have an easier time using their software. Um, any software basically <laughs> that exists. It's, it's you know a, a really short and easy way of explaining it is it's, it's a GPS for, for all things um, software. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. I mean, Anything that can help boost productivity and make make things easier, um, I'm all for it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And after hearing that, I'm I'm excited to dive deeper on all the social things you are doing. Um, But before we get there, I want to ask you a little bit about your background and how you found yourself at WalkMe, because I know working in social, you know, getting to becoming a social media manager or you know, just working in social in general, it's not always a straight and narrow path. And it's always interesting. No, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. How people end up where they are. So could you just walk us through your background a little bit and tell us how you found yourself at Walk Me? Absolutely. Okay. So it's kind of a funny story, but I decided one day that I really wanted to be a graphic designer. Um, and I studied for it and I sort of opened up my own freelance business and found myself very quickly enjoying the other side of graphic design more the business side um, and sort of turned myself into a one-stop shop for um, copywriting and design and marketing um, obviously mostly on social and I found that I just enjoyed that the most and sort of just transitioned from there to a social media agency and um, yeah and last year I made made the move to walk me so yeah I love it well while I was at the agency I I sort of uh, headed up the b2b enterprise side of of the company. um, And that's where I got most of my experience. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never had experience working at an agency, but I know managing one company, social media is challenging enough. And I can imagine it's so challenging, you know, with managing multiple companies and um, everyone has a different target audience and things like that. But I'm, I'm sure you probably enjoy being closer with, you know, one company and being able to collaborate with sales and just forming deeper relationships and understanding like all of the other marketing activities. So um, absolutely. Well, being there from the beginning, you know, from the inception of an idea all the way through to taking it to market and and putting it out there for the world to see has been amazing. I love being a part of the entire story from the beginning to the end. It's, mm-hmm. it's great. It's yeah, been wonderful. Definitely. Okay. So now I, we have to get to it. I'm so excited to talk about <laughs> all the amazing things you're doing um, at walk me. And I first want to talk about, since, you know, you're new to, um, walk me and, um, after coming from an agency, 
I think you know that tech and B2B social sometimes have the stereotype of being very serious and, you know, being kind of boring at times. It's not the most warm and fuzzy topic. You know, it, it can be technical at times. Um, and from all the incredible things you're doing at Walk Me, I know, you know, this, you know, that this does not have to be the case. It does not need to be boring. Um, but I do think we do, we still have some time to go in B2B kind of when we look where B2C is and how they reach their audience. Of course, I don't think we need to be doing exactly what um, B2C <laughs> is doing, but I think we do have a ways to go in the B2B space. So I have to know, what are you doing to kind of break down these stereotypes and how are you humanizing um, the Walk Me brand on social? So you're totally right. Let's start with that. The B2B world definitely has a way to go um, when it comes to being more human and more sociable on social media. Um, and I think that's part of, you know, the mindset that needs to be there is this is a very down to earth, personable um, touch point. This is where people, real people who are seeing your brands are going to engage with it on a very personable level. This is not a sales call. It's, you know, it's not like some billboard thing happening. This is, this is real life, personable, um, sort of um, time to talk to your audience and make sure that they're coming to terms with who you are as a brand in a very humanized, down-to-earth sort of way. So I think that that's really important for brands to remember is that this is not, you know, this is not the time to be the most, your most technical self. Um, mm -hmm. And even for the brands that are saying, well, we're a very technical product and Walk Me could definitely make that claim. This is a very technical product. Um, you know, if this is, this is the time to really showcase the people behind the tech. So all big companies are made from people um, and leveraging your people in any way possible is really the best way to going towards humanizing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so I would say that that's really something that um, the companies uh, across the B2B world really need to keep in mind. Um, you know, we don't need to have a social feed that's just like, here's a blog and here's a white paper and here's a product video that can also be, here are our people and here is how we get to where we're going. Um, and, and being very, um, I guess, reachable in that way, in a very like understanding who we are as uh, as people, you know, and I'm going to say that over and over again, because social media is for people, um, yeah. is really the best way to to get there. So like I said before, you know, social, or you said on my behalf, actually, social media is for people. So be social. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I, I totally agree. Um, and I think it can be a little challenging um, sometimes. Could you maybe give like a few examples of what you're doing to kind of, you know, show the people behind the brand and, and kind of make that personal connection? Absolutely. And there's a few different ways that, um, you know, social media managers sort of behind the scenes can do that. Um, a really good way is with engagement. Okay. So we always say no posting and ghosting, you know, don't post and then let the comments pile up and not respond. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to respond and respond as a person, you know, respond with emojis. I am a liberal emoji user and <laughs> gifts and jokes and, you know, just having sort of like an interesting back and forth with a commenter can really make all the difference with their decisions later. Like you would be surprised by how many of those turn into leads later on because they just feel like, oh, like we have this like connection here. Um, mm -hmm. So I definitely think that that's a really good way to go. Other things is that, you know, you can sort of explain your brand or explain your community in an off the path, off the beaten path sort of way. Um, and there's, a lot of testing and a lot of trial and error that comes with that and, and that's okay like that should be something that people are really comfortable with when they're posting for b2b you know find where your audience is comfortable um, engaging with you in less than usual ways and a good example of that is um, kind of took a, a shot in the dark a couple of weeks ago and created a quiz <laughs> for our dap um, we have we have like basically this community of dap users um, and we call them the DAP professionals. And I wanted to create a quiz for them and sort of engage them in a more fun way. So I created this quiz called, which DAP superhero are you? And it was scientific in no way. And it was fun and it was cool. And people did it and they shared their results and it was just fun. And it was just a fun way to engage the community on a very human and personal level. Um, and it caused a lot of engagement, which, excuse me, which means more people saw the post and more people 
saw and um, you know engaged with our content on a on a wider scale. Um, so it wasn't you know something technical like a product video, but still brought quite a lot of engagement from outside. Yeah, I love that because it's also like that is something that you remember. You know, you're not always gonna you know, after seeing a blog post, um, that's not going to stay with you, but a fun quiz like that, like that stays with you and it makes an impact. And I think anywhere you can add those little personal touches, it really, really goes a long way. And I love that you brought up, um, engaging in the comments, because this is something that I seriously love so much. And I think it's probably like my favorite part of the job. I love talking and engaging with our community. It seriously gets me like so fired up when I see comments. I just, I love it. And I think that's why I love social media so much is, is the connection with other people. And that's, that's the heart of social media. Um, and I think it's, it's so amazing because you wouldn't be able to make those connections outside of social. And I mean, I wouldn't have a job, um, too, (laughs) but I love that. And that's, that's where community is born. You know, community doesn't always have to be like a closed group like the people that are engaging in your comments and like always consuming your content and they're there and you know you're making them feel something like that that is also what community is all about it doesn't always have to be like a closed group um but yeah I I totally agree so it's sort of funny that you're saying that because for a really long time I, I actually disliked the engagement side of the job and I think that for me, having the realization of like, oh, I'm not just saying like, thanks for your comments, but I'm actually engaging them on a very human level, made it so enjoyable that I'm in the same place that you are now, where I'm like, this is my favorite part, and Mm -hmm. engaging with these particular people in our community that we have constantly growing on the Walk Me channels is, they are like the funniest people ever. They're so (laughs) cool, and they're so fun to talk to, and we have these regular commenters, and we have this ongoing banter, and, and there is something there about being very, very human. And if I was just trying to be like a company, then I would be like, thanks, or just a like, but when you respond, you know, in in like, oh, but you're my best friend sort of way, you know, it Mm -hmm. really goes a long way towards um, cementing that relationship and and continuing that that sort of um, connected chain of engagements that are going to come later. Mm -hmm, Definitely. And those are the brands that you remember those stick out to you and they reply back with something funny or joke. That's what you remember. It's so fun. (laughs) It's so fun. Okay. So I feel like we've, we've covered humanizing social and giving, um, a brand kind of more of a personality. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the more technical side, um, because, you know, you do that, that part of it is so very important for your brand. And, you know, you're trying to grow brand awareness and, um, you know, you can generate leads from social media. So I want to ask you, how do you be more relatable with your social content? Um, when you're trying to, you know, focus on like the brand itself, how do you, how can tech companies be more relatable to their target audience? So there's a few different ways and I highly recommend looking at a piece of content and first of all saying like, is this valuable to my social community in any way, shape or form? Because sometimes content is created for a company that's great to be used in so many different ways and it's just not good for social. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important for social media managers to sort of say to themselves like, is this very technical high level white paper, let's say, you know, a a good match for for the community that I have going on um, on LinkedIn, for example, for the, for our community. And if the answer is no, then you have one of two ways. One is to just stick it and say like, it's not happening, you know, we have to wait. And the other way is to just really socialize it. And that can happen in a lot of different ways. Looking at a, at a white paper and saying, you know, this is super dry or it's not um, the right thing. I'm actually really enjoying working with Walk Me because most of their content is, is very, very uh, sociable, but I've, I've worked with clients in the past where things are, are quite dry um, and being able to look at it and say, you know, how can I work with the algorithm and how can I work with the um, community that I already have to make this engageable? Um, so a few different ways that you can do that is to see what your what your community already responds to. What does your audience already respond to? Do they respond more to PDF documents on LinkedIn? Do they respond to to polls, excuse me. Um, I find that polls are actually a really good way to promote blogs, for example. Um, You ask a question in the poll and, you know, go to the blog to find the answer has actually raised quite a lot of impressions um, and quite a lot of engagement. 
Um, and there are ways to do that. And there's, and there's ways to sort of make content digestible and easy for your audience to um, enjoy it and, and not be like, well, I'm not even going to click on this. It's, it's not even going to be relevant to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, take a chance, try new things, <laughs> see mm-hmm. what your audience responds to. Um, and yeah, actually just like look at it and say like, if I was a person scrolling, would I click on this? And mm-hmm. would I be interested in this? And I think yeah. that that's really important. Okay. I love the poll idea with the blog post. And this is why I love this show because it's ideas like this. Like I love that. And I never thought about that. And I'm totally going to take a note out of your book and <laughs> Go try for it. it out. I love that. Um, but it is so important to always, when I'm pushing out a piece of content, I always try to like think to myself, like, what's the why behind this? Like, what value is this providing? So but like- then I'm also thinking, okay, like, how do I kind of make the first sentence like a hook? So, you know, like what's going to engage your audience and stop the scroll. And it can be intimidating sometimes to try out new things uh, on social. Um, And, you know, even if it does flop, I guess you could also turn that into like a thought leadership piece. Be like, this is what we (laughs) tried. It didn't work. Um, So this is what we learned from it. Um, so yeah, content is always interesting because sometimes I use flops all the time, by the way, in case you're yeah. wondering, like a flop is, is a lot, it's still a lot of information. Yeah. Why did it happen that way? You know, that's still a lot of information about your audience and what they respond to that you can use for next time. So mm-hmm. don't be afraid of that stuff. You know, it's worth, it's worth trying, even if it's super nerve wracking and you're waiting for all the notifications and they just silence and you're like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, it's still totally worth it. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's so funny because sometimes you'll create a post and you're like, this one is going to get them like, I know this one's going to perform well. And then other times, you know, it just, it doesn't do, it doesn't resonate. And you're like, okay, what's going on here? And you really have to deep dive um, into what's going on. But from my experience, I found that posts that have people in them um, coming from like our Octopus corporate channel always perform the best. And again, it goes back to that rule, like social media is meant to be social. We're connecting with another human at the end of the day. Um, But I'm curious to know at Walk Me, what content is really resonating with your audience? Okay, so first of all, you're totally not imagining that, okay? People and people's faces always perform the best. Um, And it's for exactly the same reason that you said, like, people want to see people on social media. And that is just the way it is. Like, you're, you're... no, you're not going to get better engagement than seeing other people. And I'm not talking about stock, stock photos. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like let's kill the stock photos. Let's use real yes. people from your real company. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know what? I, I really like to use um, the photos of our real employees and our real volunteer days and our real things to promote everything from talent acquisition. You know, we're hiring, here's job opportunities, which, you know, as I'm sure, you know, your LinkedIn is probably absolutely full of job openings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, showing up with pictures of actual people who work in your company um, is going to do way better than an ad, for example, Um, you know, just like a banner, like we're hiring, Mm -hmm. it's going to do much better than that. But um, basically like the way that I like to use them is basically for anything. (laughs) Like if you have a picture of a person and you can use it to promote almost anything that is always going to do do better than almost anything else. Um, And I think that, um, you know, going back to what we were talking about before with B2B and everything's kind of straight laced and and very technical, um, Mm -hmm. if you can break out of that and say, here's a creative way and an aesthetic way to sort of promote something about our company, including the people who are behind it, which are obviously the most important thing behind any company are the people, Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be the the top way to get to, to see your engagement rates go up. So, you know take pictures, enjoy it, selfies, the whole thing and, and just go crazy because that's really the way to go. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and when I actually first joined Octopost with, with the first month that I was there, we had a new ebook going live um, and it's called um, The Art of Social Media. And it was for, you know, the social media practitioner. Um, and they said, okay, Olivia, this is for social media managers. We don't, we're so tired of stock photos. Like no one wants to see stock photos anymore. (laughs) We're getting you in a photo shoot and we're putting you on the cover. You're our social media manager. This ebook is for social media managers. We're putting you on the cover. And it's so refreshing to be like, see the actual person in the company, like 
represented in on corporate channels and things like that. I really think it makes a difference. And we're just so tired of seeing stock photos. Like no one just stands there and is like, you know, it's it, <laughs> the, that fake smile totally. plastered on their face. It's, it's just so, so much more relatable. Um, it's true. And I mean, like really what ends up happening is that it builds up this sense of company pride. Um, mm-hmm. People are excited to see their friends or themselves, you know, up on their, on their company, social um, platforms. And, and it, it sort of generates this constant, like feeling of, my company actually cares about me. They're proud of me that I'm representing them, that I'm here. And it, it does sort of continue the cycle of um, engagement because the employees jump in and then you've got, you know, obviously, you know, that I'm a big advocate, you know, no pun intended in a very solid uh, employee advocacy program. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it all plays into that. It just, it all starts to generate together and, and mix together and like yeah. just view out this amazing amount of, of cooperation between your company as a channel or a platform and your company as the people plus your community and your audience. So mm-hmm. absolutely agree with you. And I'm excited to see you on the cover of that ebook. So <laughs> thank you. But yeah, I agree. It's, it's a beautiful mix. And it also, I mean, for your audience, they really like, they get to know you because they see the same people over and yeah. over again, and then they see your posts and it's with employee advocacy, it's coming from the person. So it already feels more authentic and it, it is more yeah. authentic because they get to put their personal thoughts and opinions and touch on it. So definitely. I think um, authentic is really the right word. I, mm-hmm. I like to say genuine, but yeah, authentic is really the right word because like, that's what gets people to stop and look, this is, and, and, and honestly, the last year or so on LinkedIn in particular, there has been a shift in like just being very honest about what's going on in your work life. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that that plays into it. Like this is a real life snapshot of what's going on at this company um and it just plays right into what's working right now on the channel Mm -hmm. definitely um okay I want to switch gears uh for a little bit here because (laughs) we've talked about so many incredible things but I have to know how you are measuring all of this so when you sit down at the end of the day I know success looks different for everyone and every company's goals but when you sit down at the end of the day, how do you know that what you're doing is working? What, what metrics are you really focusing on? Okay, so I'm going to just start by saying that I used to be very afraid of analytics, okay? <laughs> they used to make me feel so nervous. And I think that the reason behind that is that people see the vanity metrics in front of them and they totally freak out. Um, and when you're at the mercy of you know, changing algorithms and random things happening in the background, it can, things can get really um, nerve wracking very quickly. I have definitely Mm -hmm. passed that. I have been in the game long enough that they don't freak me out as much, but um, for all the social media managers out there who are looking at vanity metrics and totally having panic attack on the inside, breathe and relax. Everything is fine. Um, But yeah, I used to fall very heavily for vanity metrics and posting for the algorithm. Like what is going to um, make the algorithm respond properly, whatever. And it, it takes time to sort of like hone yourself into thinking like I am posting for an actual audience of real people and I'm not posting for some robot type situation. <laughs> like it's just, it's not yeah. the same. Um, and, and the things that you see when you um, sort of let go of the vanity metrics, which is a very short term goals. They're like very short term. They don't really respond to long term goals um, and switch to things for posting for the people and taking chances and changing things like that um, and looking at long term KPIs. Um, I sort of focus more on impressions and engagement rates um, mm-hmm. and the rest sort of follows, you know, like most times things sort of change, <laughs> things sort mm-hmm. of follow in that and you you end up seeing all of these uh, rates soar. And the nice thing about that is like, you're not focusing on these day-to-day metrics. You're focusing on, on, on really like long-term goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I think it's so important that you mentioned focusing on the people because yes, metrics are important. And as social media managers, it's our job to understand what's going on, what content is resonating, but you can't ignore the people. They're the heart of it. And it, it really frustrates me when people are so focused on growing a following that they're neglecting who's already there, who's already listening. You can't grow a following and get where you want to be by ignoring your current followers. And you're hundred percent right. It it drives me insane. So as much (laughs) as metrics are so important and and we do need to keep an eye on them and understand what content is helping influence, you know, opportunities and what's 
what's really impacting the business, but we have to remember the core tenets of social media and, and what the purpose of social media is. So yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned that. Um, yeah, and it's true. I mean, when you get to that point where you sort of say, I'm not focusing so much on how many followers I'm gathering each day, um, but I'm focusing on how much the followers that I already have are engaging. And then there's this very natural growth reaction that happens from that, mm -hmm. because when you put out content that's very engageable and very valuable to the audience you have now and your engagement rates go up, you know, everything else is going to follow. The impressions are going to go up and your follower counts is going to go up and you're, you're focusing on the right things. And all of the other little things that you were focusing on before are going to follow anyway. It's just in yeah. a, in a better, in a better strategy, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's like a chain reaction. Exactly. Um, and I totally agree. So we're nearing the end of the show here. And I, this is a question I'm so excited to ask you because I ask all of my guests this, it's, <laughs> it's always interesting to hear all the different answers, but as you know, there is so much that goes on in the world of social media. Sometimes we love it. Sometimes it's chaos, but if you're not in it, it's kind of hard to understand what's going on. So I am so excited to ask you, what is one thing that you wish your colleagues in other departments knew about social media? So I love this question because I have sincerely enjoyed taking over the Walk Me channels specifically because everybody here has like a very trusting sort of attitude towards, you know, me taking over everything and they trust my intuition and my experience to do things well. Um, but I think that if I really wanted to get some message across, it would be the importance of being a really good advocate for your company um, and building up your personal brand in conjunction with your company advocacy and helping sort of hone their shape as a, as a joint effort, I guess, you know, and, and that would be really the best thing. But the other thing that I'm going to say, and I probably say this a hundred times a week, and I'm sure everyone at Walk Me is annoyed at me already for saying it, but please stop sharing content on social media, on LinkedIn in particular. Please mm -hmm. stop sharing content on LinkedIn. It is the lowest form of engagement. It does not help us. It does not help you. Uh, comments and reactions are always so much better. So mm -hmm. I really want to get that across, not just to us, but to everyone in the world, you know, if you really want to help your company and you really want to give yourself the chance to have higher engagement and be a good advocate, please stop sharing, please mm -hmm. comment. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, that would definitely be my, my top messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think commenting, you know, just really makes a bigger impact and it, you know, Absolutely. also starts the conversation more and, you know, also helps the algorithm, which is a topic for another day, but yeah, <laughs> commenting definitely makes a more meaningful impact. Well, I'm so, so happy I had the chance to sit down with you. Thank you so much for going behind the post with me. I really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful to chat with you as always.